Hi there and welcome to 272analytics.com's tutorial on how to create overlapping scatter plots in Stata. In order to do so we'll start by loading the census 13 data set that comes pre-installed in Stata using this code and I'm just going to give you a quick look at it. It's a data set about the demographic characteristics of states and the three variables that I've picked today to show you overlapping scatter plots are birth rate which is right here, marriage rate, and divorce rate. So I'm going to jump right in by creating an overlapping scatter plot and talking you through the code and showing you the usefulness of it. So here's the key here. There are a couple of things I'm going to highlight here that might be new to you. A lot of you already know the scatter command for scatter plot, which I reproduced here. You just list the variables that you want in your scatter plot, and I have picked marriage rate and birth rate. Now, I have two axes here, so I've started out by specifying the y-axis over here, number one, and the y-axis over here, number two. I have separated them using these symbols, and I've created another scatter plot here on the other side with divorce rate and birth rate. Okay, And notice there's a kind of a symmetry here, right? Over here I'm looking at divorce rate in relation to birth rate, and over here I'm looking at marriage rate in relation to birth rate. And just because I like this scheme, I've gone ahead and picked a S1 color as my favorite scheme. So uh, there is what we generate with that code. Now here's the first thing I want to call your attention to. Um, marriage rate is measured differently than divorce rate. Marriage is more frequent than divorce. So if you if you created two separate scatter plots, they would look really quite different in, in that sense. Um, but why might we want to see marriage rate and divorce rate together, sort of scaled in this way, right? In this overlapping format where the divorce rate is represented by orange and the marriage rate by green. Well, this is what I thought when I created this graphic. What we can kind of see here is that as birth rate increases, right, over here on the x-axis, so does the, the divorce rate seemingly, right? Whereas over here, the marriage rate seems kind of flat. It doesn't really seem to fluctuate according to um, the birth rate at all. So right off the bat, by putting these, these graphics in the same scatter plot, right, and kind of flattening the scales, we kind of see that there's a point where the divorce rate begins to diverge from the marriage rate in terms of its sensitivity to the birth rate, if that makes sense. Um, and, you know, you can do a regression here. You can do a regression of the marriage rate and the divorce rate. And, and you can kind of, you can check out that intuition. In fact, why don't we do it now? We can just say, let's start with the marriage rate. And here we see that, yeah, kind of like our intuition told us, right, on the scatter plot, there didn't seem to be a connection between the marriage rate and the birth rate. But what if we now do the divorce rate instead? How does that look? See, that's significant. And we actually see that the connection is that as birth rate goes up, uh, so does the divorce rate. And once we bring up that scatter plot again, you'll see that that's what we saw. See, as birth rate goes up, so does the divorce rate. And as birth rate goes up, marriage rate kind of stays flat and unaffected. And that's exactly what the regression model showed. What's useful here is it, it, it's kind of elegant, in my opinion. It's, it saves space. Um, and at the same time, it conveys information, despite the fact that these are quite different, you know, scales over here in terms of their magnitude. That's what I think an overlapping scatter plot is really good for. It, it, it shows that you've kind of thought through your data and you've found a way to convey this information elegantly and still usefully. And also so just for your purposes, you know, this is something that when I created this graphic, I hadn't run the regressions yet. I started out by just finding a couple of variables that I could use to create an overlapping scatter plot to show you. And then after I did that, I did the regressions because it seemed to me there was this pattern here between birth rate and divorce rate that didn't seem to exist for marriage rate. So I kind of came to that intuition after I looked at this graphic. And I think that's a good way of understanding how, you know, graphics can also help you, in this case, the overlapping scatter plot graphic, in grasping some statistical intuition that you can test later on. Now, I want to show you a couple more things. 
Here I've reversed the order, so I'm just going to highlight my code again. I've put divorce rate here first in relation to birth rate, and I put marriage rate uh, second over here. And if I scroll up and show you my, my initial code, you'll see that marriage rate came first and divorce rate came second. That's just a preference that also affects ordering over here. So notice that I put divorce rate first. So divorce rate shows up here, sort of from left to right, it comes first and then marriage rate comes over here and the color of the the dots also shifts in accordance with that um, with that color scheme so that's just a way of exercising a bit more control over uh, which item should appear on which y-axis finally um, I would be remiss to not show you another thing that we can do with this code here Stata is very rich very very rich in terms of kind of operators and extensions so like here's what I did here I'm just gonna highlight this for you this portion of the code here, right here, I've specified that I want to see the relationship, the scatter plot between marriage rate and birth rate only for two of the regions in this survey. And uh, the survey actually had four regions to it. So I've just picked two of them, uh, regions one and region three. And I've used this symbol here to kind of combine them. And I've done the same over here with divorce rate and I know it's a kind of big chunk of code, but you, you could copy this even from um, from 272analytics.com if you wanted to. And here's what it does. So I, I basically created that same graphic, but I delimited it to just the two regions um, that were of interest to me. Uh, anything in region one or region three uh, got included uh, over there. That's why there's there's fewer um, you know dots over there. And we, we could do that like any way that we wanted. Like if we wanted to just do region one for example you know comparison of region one to region one we could do that um, just using status abilities to you know get in there and pick any subset of the data that we want to makes that possible like so that is an even smaller and not very informative scatter plot um, but I just to show you that you know here for example I just pick region one to compare to region one over here for divorce rate and, and marriage rate. So that shows you can get creative with those extensions and you, you can find a way to narrow down the the data. You can create little subsets like that so that your scatter plot can be even more focused. Your overlapping scatter scatter plot can be even more focused on what you wanted to do. I hope this tutorial was helpful to you and I would like to invite you to visit 272analytics.com for access to all our free statistics tutorials in Stata, SPSS, R, eViews, and Minitab. Here at 272analytics.com we provide data consulting primarily to graduate students. Therefore we work very closely with you in order to perfect your chapter 3 and chapter 4. That means helping you design surveys, uh, getting your data input, assisting you with fashioning appropriate research questions and hypotheses, uh, getting your data, extracting them, transforming them, cleaning them, uh, putting them through analysis, uh, interpreting them, explaining them to you so that at the end of the day you know exactly what story your data tell, why they matter, what they mean in a manner that lets you write a, a perfect chapter 4 uh, following a perfect chapter 3 and lets you defend your dissertation or thesis with complete confidence. We provide ethical consulting. It's not a writing service, so you will be responsible for taking our blueprint, our assistance, our consulting, and transforming them into an appropriate academic project for yourself. I'd also like to remind you that we provide the same services to undergraduate students who are working with quantitatively oriented assignments. Thank you so much for listening, and have a great day.